My research is uh, mostly about building uh, machine learning or let's say intelligent systems that learn from comparisons and choices. This is Lucas Maestre, who recently received his PhD from the IC School at EPFL. I worked on a um, particular statistical model of comparison outcomes and I did some contributions on the parameter inference problem. That is, uh, from data, try to learn, um, well, uh, a model that is then able to accurately uh, predict, uh, you know, future data. The idea is that we often observe users choosing one of several alternatives. For instance, YouTube suggests several videos to viewers, and viewers may select one of the videos. This can be modeled as the fact that the viewer probably prefers the video he selected to other videos. YouTube may then exploit this kind of information to infer what kinds of preferences a user may have and what he may be most likely to click on in the future. And of course, this sort of principle has many other applications. The application we had in mind when, when thinking about these problems were improving recommender systems. So uh, say you want to um, make your recommender systems for restaurants. Uh, and the idea was instead of asking people to rate restaurants they've been to uh, by giving, you know, one to five stars to, to each restaurant they've been to, we would ask them to compare, uh, say, two restaurants they've been to and, and say which one they preferred. And the hope is that using that type of feedback, you can um, learn the, that user's preferences more accurately. But this learning problem was only part of Lucas' PhD. Then I worked on a slightly different aspect of the problem, which is the active learning setting. So there, um, still in the same statistical model, how do you go about collecting data? So which questions do you ask users so that you learn um, the model as effectively and efficiently as possible? And this is important as it allows to query quality data. I think often uh, in machine learning, there's this, uh, this I guess, belief that you know there's a lot of data at our disposal and we can just mine it and uh, and we'll learn a lot from it but often the the right data that you really need is unavailable so you have to actually uh, figure out a way to collect new data because I don't know the context is changing old data is stale or there's lots of reasons why this might be the case and so active learning it's a it's, it's a principled way to formulate the problem of how do you query the data in such a way that it will be very helpful in, um, in solving the problem. This is strongly related to comparison-based preference learning. In, in that particular example, say you want to uh, learn a user's preferences by asking him to compare items, the, the question you're asking is like, which items do you ask the user to compare? So with the idea that maybe there's some of the items that you already know a lot about, and so you don't need to uh, ask the user any more about it. And there's maybe some other part of the items that, uh, that you want to focus on. And the idea like this is very intuitive, but obviously when you have lots of items, it's, uh, it's more challenging to come up with an automatic way of uh, deciding what is you know, the part of the space that you still need to understand. And this may be of great use to many areas beyond recommender systems like AI safety. One of the uh, challenges in, um, say, artificial intelligence is to, to build systems that learn by themselves. That's called reinforcement learning. And often it's difficult to um, somehow teach, um, you know, an agent that tries to learn by itself that it, that it is doing well. And one of the uh, exciting, um, uh, say, developments I've uh, recently come across is someone who is actually asking people to compare, you know, two behaviors that that agent would do, and and say which one he thinks is more appropriate, and this would enable, for example, um, the development of a of a safer potentially artificial intelligence because there's this human feedback that comes in the form of comparison that is much more natural and easy to give as compared to trying to engineer some reward to give for certain behaviors. So I think that's an exciting direction. Having such powerful algorithms, we have to make sure that they are used for good. This work is a collaboration between OpenAI and DeepMind security team and is about introducing more human control in reinforcement learning problems. The goal was to learn to perform a backflip through reinforcement learning. I brought you this graph, which shows the evolution of the skill 
over years of the four teams that compose Group E of the upcoming World Cup. That's Brazil, Switzerland, Costa Rica and Serbia. And as you can see here, for example, Brazil is clearly the strongest teams of the four nowadays. But it's not as strong as it was in 1970, when it had really a golden generation of players.